Hi, it's Anne from The Useless Crafter. So I have had quite a few requests on, um, like people see my big off the map, right? So like the characters behind me. And um, I think they, uh, people, it, it's a little bit counterintuitive. So people look at some, at an image and they think, oh, that's too hard because there's too many colors, too many moving pieces. And then they'll send me like a request for a dinosaur or a Barbie silhouette, um, you know, some, something that seems like it would be easy, but actually um, it's really hard to do. And I'm going to show you why. So you can see my screen here. So this is the dinosaur that I was asked to do, and it's one color. So, you know, we can easily make it, let's just do it at 30 inches, right? Just so that we can see what it looks like. And it's only one color, so all we have to do is we have to slice it up. Now let me, and I will do that because it's a special request and I want to, I want to be able to help this, this person out. But let me show you what is a good image. So when you're looking for off the mat, I'm going to show you like this one's a good one. Let's see. Um, this one's a really good one, but my favorites have, have been these little um, toddler Disney princesses. So I'm going to make it a little bit bigger so we can kind of see. So what's nice about these images is I did, I did the princesses at 48 inches. So to put it into perspective, that's four feet tall. My, I'm 5'2". <laughs> My daughter is 47 inches at five and a half years old. So next to her, um, she's, she's just slightly shorter than them. So but what's nice about these images is that there there are a lot of pieces we don't want like a ton of pieces like this is a little bit much for me um but this is like look at her dress it's one two three you know it's just a few pieces they're going to be big pieces but what's nice is they're broken up in chunks even her dress right or even snow white instead of this being one piece it's two so i know when i make this really big um each panel is still gonna fit on a 12 by 12 piece of cardstock, which makes it seamless, okay? So if you think about, um, let's just, for math's sake, right? Let's just say we did this at 30 inches, and 30 inches is a really, really good size. It is considerable on a party, like cake table next to kids. It photographs really well, and it still looks really big. So if you think about 30 inches, Think of it in increments of 10. So 10, 10, 10, right? So that's going to be 10 for her face, 10 for her body, 10 for her legs. That means everything, we know we can cut 11 and a half by 11 and a half. So if everything is broken up into 10, nothing will have a seam in it. So it would look seamless and beautiful. The only parts that will have the seam is the black outline, but it's so minimal. Every, all the colors are sitting on top, beautiful colors, right? We have glitter card stock. Um, so you're not going to notice the little increments of seams around the sides, right? So that's why this is great. I mean, look at Mulan, same thing. I just cut Mulan last night. She had, the only seam I had was I made a deliberate seam right here because it was practically another panel on the skirt. But again, keep in mind, I made her 48 inches. Um, that was the only seam and her hair, I did black glitter cardstock. So I had a little seam right here, but with, again, using, knowing your materials, knowing that the Cricut black glitter cardstock will make it look seamless. You will not be able to see any seams on this doll or on this, on move on. And same thing with Cinderella. I did a part in her hair though, because her hair, again, at 48 inches is so big and so wide. Um, but she, you know, this skirt was really wide, this panel down here, and I had to cut it into three pieces, but I used a dark blue Cricut glitter cardstock. I knew it was going to hide the seams. So that's why I like, you want details on your, <clears throat> excuse me, on your off the mat projects because they help hide the seams. And you want, you want big pieces, but not too big. <laughs> you want them big so that it's less pieces that you have to deal with, but you can't have them too big because then you have to cut them up, right? You, you want each piece, your biggest piece, you want it to be 11 and a half inches or a little bit smaller. 
So that way you know if this piece is 11 inches, then you know her shirt's going to be less than 11 inches. So then that means if this piece does not have a seam, then no other piece on here will have a seam. That's kind of the mindset that I want you guys to have. Okay, so enough of preaching. <laughs> Let's delete these girls out. Let's do this dinosaur for this person. Um, let's get this out of the way. Oops. All right, let me upload the dinosaur again. Okay, so this is gonna be quick because it's just this outline, but it's a good tutorial because if this was your black outline, your background, anyway, you need to do this. So let's change this to um, 30 inches. And, you know, let's just make this, let's make it 30. 32 inches, just for the heck of it. Okay, so um, at 32 inches, let's bring in our square. And our square, we're gonna do 11 by 11. Now, it's technically Cricut can cut 11 and a half by 11 and a half, but I really don't like dealing with half inches. So I always do 11 by 11, and very rarely does the half inch even make a difference. Because if you think about it, this guy, he's 32 inches high. Well, no matter what, we need three rows of it, right? So we need one, two, three. That totals 33 inches. If we had um, 11 and a half by 11 and a half, what would that be? Uh, 34 and a half inches. You would still need three rows. <laughs> so it doesn't matter, okay? All right, so. On this first one, let's just put it somewhere here. We know we have to build a grid of squares, okay? So let's just put that one there. We're gonna go to our position feature. There's an X and a Y coordinate. Your X is the one that's running across the board and your Y coordinate is running up and down, just like in, in school when we did math, right? <laughs> so um, let's just round to the nearest whole number. So 15.167 becomes 15. And then your Y coordinate at 3.16 is just going to round down to 3, okay? So what we're basically telling Design Space is go over 15 units, go down 3 units, and here's the start of our square. So let's duplicate our square, put it really close to the first one, and then just round to the nearest whole number. 26.3 becomes 26, 3.11 becomes 3. And I'll show you the math behind it. So this one starts at 15, and the piece of paper is 11 inches long. So 15 plus 11 is 26, okay? All right, so let's do one more. We're going to do three, <coughs> excuse me. We're going we're gonna to do nine squares, I think. Um, all right, so this one is 37. It's already at three. So now we have three of them completely flushed together. It's important to have them flushed together because you don't want any gaps. You don't want any missing pieces from your puzzle and you don't want any overlays. You don't want pieces to sit on top of each other. When we, when we cut up this dinosaur, he's gonna be in big pieces and we want the pieces to just kind of butt up against each other and then that way we can tape it so that we have our, we have our dinosaur. All right, so now we have the three that's totally flushed. I want you to go to your right-hand side panel over here and select the first square, hit your shift key, select the second one and the third one. So now all three are highlighted. You can see that here. You can also see it on the screen here that all three are highlighted. We're just gonna duplicate it so that we don't have to do the three, 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 <laughs> but we just have to put them close to each other and we'll do it by set. So this one is already at 15, so we're good. 14.22 becomes 14. And then we're gonna duplicate another set and put it here. And again, this we're gonna round up to 15 and round down to 20. Okay, I think, let's just do one more set while we're here. Okay, so let's do, um, oh, actually, we don't need this set. What we need is this set. So let's grab this, hit the shift key, grab it here, and we're going to duplicate it, and we're going to do it this way. So 48 point something becomes 48, 2.9 becomes 3. Okay, so now we can grab our dinosaur. You can either grab it by clicking on his feet here or in the panel over here. Scroll down, click on your image, and go to Arrange and send to the front. Okay, so now he's up here. And here we just, I'm gonna zoom in a little bit so I can show you what we're looking for when we're doing this part. In this part here, you 
want to make sure that in each square they are big pieces. What you don't want is something like this. So do you see how the teeth, the two, these two little pieces are going to be off by itself. This one's going to be off by itself. And then later you've got to keep track of them. First of all, they're, they're small, so they might get ripped up when they're cutting on your mat. Two, if they don't, and you have to keep track of them, now you've got to tape the, this little piece onto this piece. So this is something that you don't want, right? What you do want is something like this, like a big chunk. Um, I mean, this isn't preferable, but this is something you don't want, right? Just like a puny little claw hanging off by itself. So now that we know what we want, we gotta zoom back out so that we can kind of see what we have. So let's see, we wanna make sure this hand is in here. Um, sorry, my screen is so far. Um, I think this is good. Let's zoom in now. Okay, so over here, we've got this tail by itself. That's okay, this is a big piece. This is a humongous piece. I don't like this. This is going to be hanging out by itself. Let's see if that works. Okay. And I think... Let's see. I'm moving this over so that th this, is, this leg is a bigger chunk. Okay, so that's all good. Let's see what we have. This piece is going to be a little small, but I'm okay with it because it's, I think it's going to be sizable enough. Um, this is okay. This is okay. This is as good as it's going to get. It's a dinosaur. It's kind of funky. This little piece right here. I mean, it's okay. Let me see if I can move. It's just hard. To, it's big and it's hard to get. I mean, no matter how you slice this guy, he's... Yeah, he's, he's, he's a bad shape. <laughs> I think this is... I'm okay with this. You're going to have to piece... Oh, that little piece right there. So let's go back to what we originally had. Um, I think that's going to be our best bet. Okay, so let's zoom in a little bit. Okay, let's start slicing. Okay, so we don't need this square. So you can get rid of the squares that you don't need. So that one we don't need. There's no dinosaur in that square. No dinosaur in this one. And that's it. Okay, so... Let's grab this one square and the dinosaur slice. So you can see this is actually in two pieces, but this is a big enough piece and it's gonna attach to this, so I'm okay with that. Um, so let's just, I just wanted to show you what that looks like. All right, so let's grab this one and this one and slice. This one and this. This is not my favorite right here, but it's still almost two by one inch. So it's not that small to keep track of, but this dinosaur is just the way it is. Um, all right, so let's grab these two. Now, when you're slicing, you know you can only slice two items at one time. So you can see the dinosaur is one and my square is one. So this is two items and I can slice it. Let me show you if I grab one extra item, okay? So see, I'm going to grab that extra square right here. Slicing is not available. So if you don't have two pieces, then you can't slice. You either have one or you have too many. <laughs> so just take a look at that when you're slicing. Okay. Um, let's see. We'll slice this. Okay, so we're going to have to move things out of the way a little bit. So when I'm 
I'm doing this, I do like to move it down and kind of keep it in order so that it helps me. Oh, that's a bad cut right there. That little piece. We're probably going to lose that somewhere. Um, I like keeping it in order so that it's easy for me to piece it together when I take it off the mat. So that's kind of what I'm doing here. Okay, this stuff we can just delete. Um, this we can delete. Okay, so let's slice this because it was in the middle. We couldn't get to it. All right, so here's that piece here. This piece here. This little guy right here. Okay, so yeah, I do not like that right there, but this is what we can do. Um, I'm going to zoom in. Okay, this piece, let's uh, slice out that piece so it's not attached to everything. So we're going to do this. Okay, I'm going to slice out that piece. Oh, it didn't let me slice. Hold on. Why is it not letting me slice? That's so weird. For some reason, it's not letting me slice. So I'm going to show you how to contour. So let's break this into three pieces. So when you want something in three pieces and you're going to use contour, you need three copies of it, okay? So here's the first one. Let's go to contour. And we're going to get rid of this piece and this piece. I just want this piece right here. Okay, I'm going to take this piece. I'm going to, I'm going to zoom in even more, okay? Because what I want to do is I don't want to lose that little piece right there. So I'm going to put this back together. And I'm going to weld those two pieces together. So now you have a bigger piece. You don't need this guy over here. Um, so let's go to contour. Let's get rid of this one and this one. So this foot is by itself. And then let's get um, on this one. Let's contour. We don't need this and we don't need this. Okay, so here's that piece. And then here's our piece right here. So this is what it looks like when it's pieced together. Okay, so that's one way of dealing with the extra little piece. I definitely like this better now that it's a bigger piece. Um, I think we can separate, yeah, so it's a separate piece by itself. So let's duplicate this and separate it just so that we can see how big it is, okay? So here's the big foot by itself. And then let's get rid of the big foot so we select on it to get rid of it. So here's our little guy hanging out by himself. And he, yeah, he is one and a half inches by a quarter. He's tiny. I'm wondering, where does he go? Does he go up here? Yeah, so he's here. That's, that's just, that's just the way it goes. <laughs> I know I'm not a fan, but um, that's what happens when you have a dinosaur. There's nothing I can do. Let's go to the Make It screen so you can see what it looks like. Um, so we can definitely consolidate. Like if you see, this one still has room over here for any small pieces. This one has a lot of room. This one, we'll just move it. So you see you can move it anywhere on, on the page, but you can also move it to another screen. So you click on the three dots, move object, and we're going to stick him right here in the middle of everything because there's room right here, okay? So that saves us one extra cut. Um, this is pretty big. All right, what about this guy? Does he fit anywhere? Um, you know what, this can fit on the other page. So let's click on the three dots, move object, and we'll move him here. And then this one, we can do this. Oops. There we go. All right, so we're down to one, two, three, four, five, six. Six 12 by 12 pieces of cardstock. I highly recommend using glitter, black glitter cardstock for this one because you won't be able to see the seams or it won't be as noticeable. Um, 
The other thing that you can do is once you piece it together, if it's for a birthday party, like string the happy birthday over the dinosaur. That's that's all I have for you on this one. I would have, um, next time, if you're looking for a dinosaur SVG, I would look for something with maybe like an outline and some of the bones or some of the like, um, I don't know, is it like a stegosaurus or whatever, like the little spikes on top and have those be individual pieces in different colors. Then we can add things onto the dinosaur to hide the scene. All right, I hope this was a helpful like overview of off the mat and what you should look for um, when you're buying an SVG. All right, that's it for me. If you have any comments or questions, please post them. And if you have any special requests, you can see places, Instagram, Facebook, and YouTube. I'm always on and, um, you know, just ready to help you. I think it's hard to learn how to use the Cricut. Um, I think it's hard at first to even know like what's a good project versus a bad project or what could be a better project. So I'm definitely here to bounce ideas off of and I will see you next time. Bye!